What are some of the biggest position battles in spring training for the Atlanta Braves? Could they go with the six-man rotation to open up that battle as well? And who will win these position battles? I will tell you all of that on today's episode of Locked on Braves. So let's get into it. You are Locked on Braves, your daily Atlanta Braves podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, and welcome back to Locked On Braves, brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network, where we talk about your favorite teams every day. I'm your host, Jake Mastriani. You can follow me on Twitter at shortstopball. Check out my bio there to see everywhere I am covering the game of baseball, including your Atlanta Braves in written form over at tomahawktake.com. Also, make sure you follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves so that you can send in your comments, feedback, on the show really do appreciate all the communication there make sure you subscribe to us on a youtube great conversations in the chat section there on youtube as well we're really really pushing closely to a thousand subscribers on youtube so appreciate all the support there getting close to a 600 followers on twitter so that's great as well trying to get to 1k there before opening day two and thanks for making locked on braves your first listen each and every day We post episodes daily five days a week, Monday through Friday, and we are free and available on all platforms. On today's Tuesday episode of Lockdown Braves, we're going to be talking about position battles in spring training. He's got a couple of key battles to watch out for, mainly in the bench, bullpen, and starting rotation. And speaking of rotation, Brian Snicker mentioned that they could be going to a six-man rotation to start the year. So we'll talk about that, some candidates for those last rotation spots. Also, we'll get to some takeaways from Monday's spring training game and other news coming out of Monday. So with that, let's get into the position battles. Who is the lock? Who is battling for a spot? Let's start with the locks that we know right now with the Atlanta Braves. And, I mean, you're coming off a World Series win. You've made some big signings, a lot of young players coming back you have a lot of your core pieces remaining so a lot of roster spots are really pretty much a lock just about 20 spots at this point looking at the position players i have 10 players that are a lock in travis darno manny pena that will be the catching duo matt olson ozzy albies dansby swanson austin riley around the horn then Marcelo Zuna, Adam Duvall, Eddie Rosario, and Guillermo Heredia. Now you can also throw Ronald Acuna Jr. in in here. That would make 11 position players. Acuna could start the season on the IL, which would open up a roster spot. But that gives 11 position players right there that are already a lock going into a spring training. Going to the pitchers, I have nine pitchers that are a lock, so several key spots open there, mainly in the rotation. I have Max Freed, Charlie Morton, Ian Anderson, Kenley Jansen, Will Smith, Tyler Matzik, A.J. Minner, Luke Jackson, and Colin McHugh, all his locks as pitchers, so that's nine pitchers, potentially 11 position players. That's 20 roster spots right there, already locked up. Like I said, if Acuna starts the season on the IL, which he most likely will, then that's 19 roster spots. So, again, leaves either seven or eight spots open, possibly even more if the season started with expanded rosters, which they are talking about doing. And hopefully we have some sort of answer on that soon as managers and GMs need to know. But... You could have potentially again, we'll say we'll say six or we'll say six or seven roster spots open right now. So who is battling for those roster spots? Let's start with the bench. On the 40 man roster, you have Orlando Arcia, Travis Demerit, and Alex Dickerson, who are are fighting for uh, rotation spots or bench spots um, on the opening day lineup. 
Among the non-roster invitees, you have Ryan Goins, Phil Goslin, and Bro Brock Holt, who are battling for a spot on the roster on the bench. The likely winners for me out of that group, I think Orlando Arcia is pretty much a lock to be the utility backup infielder. I think Alex Dickerson is a lock. You got to have somebody on there who can hit left-handed and gives you some thump off the bench. So I think he is a likely winner for one of those bench spots. And then I, I think Bill Goslin is going to win a spot as well as another utility player who can play infield, you know, play pretty much anywhere. So I got Arcia Dickerson and Goslin again. Those bench spots really depends kind of on if Acuna is going to be ready to go right away. But those are three spots right there that I think could be taken for the bench. Fighting for bullpen spots. On the 40-man roster, you have Dylan Lee, Sean Newcomb, Tyler Thornburg, possibly Tukey Toussaint. We'll talk more about him in a little bit. Non-roster invitees, I think it's Brad Brock and Darren O'Day who have the best chance as non-roster invitees to win a spot. Likely winners out of this group for me to make the bullpen. And remember, this bullpen is already very deep um, with the guys that I mentioned earlier. The top six, you already have Jansen Smith, Matzik, Mentor, Jackson, McHugh. You're probably only going to get one or two more bullpen arms, well, likely two more. But again, to start the season, you could see some guys who can go deeper in the games. But of the guys that I just men mentioned battling for bullpen spots, I picked Darren O'Day, possibly Sean Newcomb. You could throw on this list as well. Maybe Tyler Thornburg, uh, if you'd rather have another righty. But I think Darren O'Day, if healthy, has a really good shot of making the bullpen on opening day. So I'm going with Arcia, Dickerson, Goslin, and O'Day for the bench and bullpen spots. So that leaves three spots open. If, if you're looking at a 26-man roster, again, that could be expanded even more. But that leaves three spots open, which I think will be filled by the starting rotation with either two starters and a swingman or a long reliever type, type pitcher or just three straight-up starters. So that, to me, is the biggest competition in spring training will be for those last couple of spots in the rotation. Who is the favorite to win those jobs? That's what we're going to talk about next. It's that time of year again as college basketball's tournament is finally upon us from all the latest odds, contests, player props. BetOnline.net is the number one source for all your sports betting needs and info. BetOnline remains the best spot for all of your sports scores, podcasts, and news this season. And it's not just basketball. BetOnline is your continued source for all your sport wagering information needs, including live betting in your favorite Vegas casino games. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. Bet online where the game starts. So Brian Snicker hinted on Monday that they could begin the season with a six-man rotation, something I've kind of mentioned before that I think could be a possibility and make some sense or perhaps having a five-man rotation and using an opener for that sixth game. So, again, I think it makes sense. It's why I've kind of hinted at it, mentioned it myself. The Braves will have 14 straight games to begin the season, seven-game homestand, followed by a seven-game road trip. A lot of times to begin the season, you'll have a couple of off days there to begin, and you can even go with a four-man rotation, as the Braves have done at times in the past. But not this year. Coming out of a shortened spring training, starters will probably still be limited as far as how deep they can go into games. And again, 14 straight games to start the year. It will kind of make sense if Brian Snicker does decide to go with a six-man rotation. And I'm thinking that he will. Braves have a lot of starter candidates. They have a lot of bullpen relievers that can throw multiple innings. So I think it's the smart move anyways, again, especially with this shortened short spring training. You, know, you don't want guys to get blow their arms out early. You don't want them to blow their arms out at all, but especially don't want them to get burnt out early in the year when maybe they're not stretched out as you would have over a typical spring training. So 
I think that's the way that Snickers leaning. I think that's what we're going to see. So who will be fighting for those rotation spots? I think your main candidates are Tucker Davidson, Kyle Wright, Kyle Muller, Tuki Toussaint, Waskar, and Waskar Noah. Now, Bart, Mark Bowman said in his mailbag column that he believes you know it could be delayed as he continues to recover from a shoulder ailment he had at the la- at the end of last year. If he's healthy, I think he has a really good shot to win a rotation spot. But I'm going to say my two most likely candidates to win those last two rotation spots, these are the guys I've kind of been picking all offseason, all through the lockout when we didn't have much to talk about, and we were talking about who could be in the starting rotation. I think it's going to be Kyle Wright and Tucker Davidson that gets the first crack in the rotation Look, you had enough trust in Kyle Wright and Tucker Davidson to let them pitch in a World Series. Um, It went good for Kyle Wright. Not so much for for Tucker Davidson, a tough spot for both of them. Um, But I feel like you had enough confidence in them at that point. I feel like the Braves would still have that confidence in them to start the season in the rotation. So those are my two most likely candidates to be in the starting rotation. I have Kyle Wright as the top candidate. You know, he had a good uh, uh, regular season in AAA Gwinnett last year. I get it. We've seen that story before. But then he builds on that, comes in the World Series, and is just amazing in the biggest game of the World Series. That game changed everything in that series. I got to think he's the top candidate to win one of those rotation spots. Now, he's still going to have to earn it. All of these players are going to have to earn it in spring training. A lot will be you know, what they look like, how good they look. So, But I think Kyle Wright, to me, is a front runner for one of those spots. Then I think it's between Davidson and Muller and Enoa, if healthy. I like Davidson. I think he's a pretty safe pick. Again, I know he didn't have a great start there in the World Series, but that's a big spot to put him in. But I just think he, I think he's a very solid pitcher i think he could be a number three potentially at his highest uh point that's probably his ceiling but i think he more likely settles into a fourth or fifth spot and you can feel very confident in him there that he's going to give you quality innings every time out uh we'll listen to his start on monday and the velocity was up throwing his fastball in the mid 90s uh throwing a change up that he was trying to incorporate a little bit more that he was working on in the upper 80s so He's certainly working on things, getting stronger. So I, I'm I'm high on Tucker Davidson winning one of those spots. Again, I think it's Wright and Davidson. I'd have Wright as the leader with Davidson behind him. And then if they go to a sixth man, I kind of wouldn't mind seeing Kyle Muller get that spot. Um, he had a good run last year with the Braves. Wouldn't mind seeing him getting another chance there. Gives you another lefty in the rotation as well. So he would probably be third on my list. Again, if they do go to a sixth man rotation, wouldn't mind seeing Kyle Muller in that sixth spot. That leaves Tuki Tucson and Waskari Noah out for me. If Noah is healthy, I think he gets one of those spots. He had a really good stretch, a, a much longer stretch last year of being really good in the big league. So I could see him winning one of those spots again, if healthy. Something else I think you have to consider is using Enoa as an opener. If he is kind of delayed coming back, maybe he's not stretched out all the way. Maybe use Enoa as an opener. You know, let him go three or four innings in his first couple of starts. Continue to kind of stretch him out, see how he does, and then you know you can build from there if you want to and make decisions at that point. If you do that, I don't hate the idea of using Tuki Toussaint as a piggyback starter. You know, if you go into a game knowing that Inoa has, you know, 60, 65 pitches in him, you know, maybe he gets through two, three, possibly four innings, and then you have Tuki ready to come in behind him. Look, I'm a big fan of the piggyback starter. I think it's a good idea in today's games where you have pitchers who come out and just max effort for as long as they can and, you have guys who have trouble getting through that lineup, you know, two or three times, especially for somebody like Inoa, who 
primarily throws two pitches in a fastball and slider. Sometimes it's harder for him to get through a lineup a second and third time. So I'm not opposed to the idea of having Enoa as an opener and then maybe follow him up with somebody like Tuki Tucson or Sean Newcomb or shoot, Colin McHugh can go multiple innings. So I'm not opposed to that idea either, but I do think Enoa gets a shot when healthy, if healthy. I think he's proved it enough at the big league level to earn that opportunity. So that's how I kind of see the rotation playing out. Again, these guys will have to earn it in spring training, show that they're healthy, show they can be effective. But I also think there's another move coming at some point. I think Alex Antopoulos will find a cheap veteran starter at some point to help fill out the rotation, at least in the early going, to help eat some innings. However, if it's going to be somebody who's not already in camp, you better find them quickly because – we are less than three, way, three weeks away from opening day. If you sign a starter now, they may not have enough time to get ready for a regular season start in three weeks. So that is something to keep an eye on. If it's a free agent starter that Alex signs, then they may not have enough time to get ready for that first those first 14 games, which is when you really need that extra starter. He could be trading for somebody as well, too. Uh, I think that's probably the more likely route at this point. Nothing crazy, you know, just a veteran uh, that's not making a ton of money that can come in and, and start some games for you early in the season. Somebody with options would be great as well. But I do think we see Alex pick up another starter at some point throughout this spring training to just add some depth to the rotation. But that will be the biggest thing to watch in spring training for me is how these guys battle it out for those rotation spots. They're all going to get used at some point this year. But if I had to pick right now, I think Wright and Davidson are the top leading candidates for a rotation spot. Inoa, if healthy, and then Muller right there as well. So we'll have to see how that plays out. should be fun to watch. Speaking of rotation candidates, two main contenders pitched on Monday. Which one took a step forward? We'll talk about that next. This episode is brought to you by Rock Auto. With the ever-increasing number of makes and models, it's now impossible for your local chain auto parts store to stock all the parts you need. Why endure often pointless or seemingly intimidating questioning and wait while the person behind the counter orders the parts on their computer, choosing the only brand their warehouse happens to carry? You have computers with access to Rock Auto auto.com at home where you can order the parts yourself and pick from any brand that you choose save time and money when using rock auto why choose to spend 30 50 sometimes even a hundred percent more for the same same parts from a chain store or new car dealership rock auto is a family business serving do-it-yourselfers for over 20 years rock auto prices are reliably low for every customer and they have everything you need from brake parts tail lamps and motor oil even new carpet Go explore their easy-to-use website today and find the solution to your auto part needs. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. And while you're there, please do us a favor and write Locked On in there. How did you hear about us, Box? So they know that we sent you amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need at rockauto.com. couple of news and notes from Monday's game. Uh, the couple of rotation candidates that did go on Monday were Tuki Tucson and Tucker Davidson. Tuki Tucson struggled in his first inning, but then settled down in the second inning. Davidson was the exact opposite. He was lights out in his first inning, striking out the side, but then struggled a bit in his second inning of work. Both gave up four hits. Tuki also gave up a walk and an earned run with two strikeouts. Davidson gave up a pair of runs and struck out four. Again, both of them going two innings. We also got to see Freddie Tarnock and Alan Ringel on uh, Monday. That was before they were optioned to Gwinnett, so got a quick look at them. I'm really high on Freddie Tarnock. I don't know that he'll get a shot this year, but he's definitely there on the depth chart. Uh, I think could be a big season for him. Both of them gave up a hit and struck out two batters in their alone inning of work. Um, Tarnock's run was unearned. They both gave up a hit and a run, sorry, with two strikeouts. Tarnock's run was unearned nothing really of note at the plate from monday brave scattered six hits throughout the game so nothing of note offensively from monday's game news coming out of camp on monday max freed will get his first start of spring training 
on Tuesday. Charlie Morton threw a simulated game on Monday. That means we could see him in his first, first spring training start over the weekend, either on Saturday or Sunday. I tend to think it's most likely going to be Sunday, especially if they're going to stick with that six-man rotation to start the year, which I think they will. That would put him on schedule to start the second game of the year with Max likely getting the opening day start. In Mark Bowman's mailbag article on MLB.com, when asked about a realistic timeline for Mike Soroka, he said a return in 2023 would be more likely with how cautious the Braves will be with him. He says everyone is just hoping that Mike Soroka will beat the odds and effectively pitch in the majors again. This is certainly kind of a bummer of news, especially hearing how Mike Soroka, how optimistic Mike Soroka was the other day doing interviews. But Bowman has a great sense of how the organization feels about Soroka, so I certainly believe him on this. As I've been saying for a while, and I will keep saying and reminding fans, I'm not counting on anything from Mike Soroka in 2022. If we get something from him, great. If not, it's not a real loss because I am not counting on him to be part of the 2022 season. I hope he is for his sake. I hope he is. Um, I hope he's able to get back this year, next year, whenever, and just be able to pitch again and be as effective as he was. I just really am rooting for the guy. I want to see him be able to pitch again, but this is uh, like Mark Bowman is talking about. I mean, this is against all odds here trying to come back from two Achilles tears to pitch major on the major league level again and be effective. Um, that's going to be tough. And, you know, again, I think as fans, we need to just kind of lower our expectations a little bit of maybe what Mike Soroka could be, will be again, and just pray and hope that this guy can get healthy, get back to doing what he loves. The Braves did at least have enough confidence in him to sign him to $2.8 million through arbitration. That's a good chunk of money um, to just give out to somebody. So they must at least be hopeful, expecting him to be able to pitch, maybe not at some point this year, but at least get to a point where they think he could be a part of the 2023 season. You know, that's really the only reason you pay somebody nearly $3 million is you feel, you know, that he can get back to pitching at that level again. So again, while Mark Bowman saying saying that, you know, realistically you may not see him till 2023, the fact the Braves did that tells me they at least have some level of confidence that he's going to be able to get back and pitch at some point. So again, just hoping that he will. I'm not counting on it for anything. Um, and especially this season, you know, we get the next season and maybe we get a little bit more hopeful of what Mike Soroka could do. But if he gets a bitch at all in 2022, I'll be ecstatic, mainly just for him. Still, no really expectations with him being a major factor on this season. But that will do it for this episode of Locked On Braves. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at Locked On underscore Braves. You can follow me at Shortstop Ball. Also, make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your podcast. Subscribe to us on YouTube as well. And again, Appreciate all the support that you give me on the show each and every day. But that will do it for this episode, and we will talk to you next time.